This election's crazier than a soup sandwich. One president dropped out, the other was shot in the head. Now you've got a female black Democrat campaigning for the white vote and a white Republican guy campaigning for the black vote. And the Hispanics are like, hola, over here. Trump flew to Chicago today for the Black Journalist Convention, first time Republican nominee to do that in 20 years. Kamala was also invited, but she said she was too busy. But the guy who showed up was treated worse than the woman who ditched. I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen women of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> you don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. And I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit. Uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country, uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, which is one of the greatest programs ever for black workers and black entrepreneurs. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a step further. I was invited here, and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala, uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. They couldn't get their equipment working or something Mr. was President, wrong. I would love I think you it's a answer very the question nasty question. Well, I, I have answered the question. I have years. been the best president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. Better That's than, my answer. Better than President Johnson who signed answer. the Voting Rights Act? And for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. That moment changed the campaign. Donald Trump ripped the news cycle right out of Kamala's hands. That exchange is going to be seen by millions of black Americans. It'll be seen by everyone. And how they react to it will decide the country's future. This is like the Megyn Kelly moment at the debate. Remember, only Rosie O'Donnell. It's going to leave a mark. They say half of life is showing up. Donald Trump showed up. Kamala Harris didn't. Donald Trump didn't have to go to the National Black Journalist Convention in Chicago. What just happened could even cost him votes. But he wanted to go because, as president, he wants to work for them. Kamala not showing up is taking the black vote for granted. If you're invited into someone's house and they disrespect you, it doesn't matter who they are, what they look like, black, female, whatever, Trump doesn't tolerate disrespect. And as president, whether you like him or not, whether he makes you feel uncomfortable or not, that's the attitude you want in a leader, someone who works for your vote and who doesn't allow the country to be disrespected. Might not look pretty, but it works. And his presidency proved that. Mr. Nice Guy Joe Biden and laughing Kamala Harris, politically correct, but cowards, won't stand up for our sovereignty or our safety. So what if Biden and Harris say all the right things and don't make you feel anxious? Country's a mess. Your feelings are the problem. These insecure people are so privileged that they're putting their own personal feelings about a president's vibe over their own countrymen's lives. People are being hurt in America by smooth-talking politicians. In that moment, Trump's not worried, does this hurt me politically? He's defending his honor. He's doing what he thinks is right. 
because his policies benefited the black community more than Biden-Harris's. He doesn't care if you call him rude or racist, if he knows he's doing what's right. This country's in too bad of shape to be so sensitive. Black communities are furious that Kamala Harris, a black woman, flooded their neighborhoods with migrants and showered the foreigners with welfare. And she didn't show up today. My message is to stop people from invading our country that are taking, frankly, a lot of problems with it. But one of the big problems, and a lot of the journalists in this room I know and I have great respect for, a lot of the journalists in this room are black. I will tell you <laughs> that coming, coming from the border are millions and millions of people that happen to be taking black jobs. You had the best. What exactly is a black job, sir? A black job is anybody that has a job. That's what it is, anybody that has a job. All right. And Mr. they're, taking, President, they're I... taking the employment away from black people. They're coming in, and they're coming in, they're invading. It's an invasion of millions of people, probably 15, 16, 17 million people. I have a feeling it's much more than that. And, and everybody's been seeing what's happened. The first group of people, the black population, is affected most by that. And Kamala is allowing it to happen. Could Kamala Harris sit in front of an audience like that, a black audience, and justify pumping millions of migrants into their streets? They're not putting migrant shelters in the white dudes for Harris neighborhoods. They're putting them in the south side of Chicago. But the ABC reporter didn't want to listen and kept interrupting them. And Trump was a pretty good sport, even after they kept him waiting 30 minutes and couldn't get the audio straight. First of all, uh, it's very hard to hear you for whatever reason because of the fact that they have bad equipment, because I guess, you know, this woman was unable to get the right equipment. But it's very hard for me to hear you, but I can hear every other word. Uh, it's very difficult, actually. I won the case and it got very little publicity. I didn't notice ABC doing any publicity on it, George. We come George to you extensively, sir. I'd love to move over onto I different I didn't notice you now. do any publicity on it at all. I won the case, the biggest case. Uh, this, was, this is an attack on a political opponent. I have another one where sir, I have a hostile mind, judge. Move, we have you for a limited time, uh, sir. I'd love to move on to different no, topics. Excuse you, you're can. the one that held me up for 35 minutes, just so you understand. We didn't know what was next. Yeah. And I, I, two I'm days sorry. after I, that. I cannot understand your microphone. I know, is so it is awful. really hard for I, me I mean, to understand it's just, you too. I can understand you perfectly. Because she's closer. I can understand um, you. I'm happy to hear that, sir. But I can't really understand Harris. <laughs> I have a few more questions. Because of the distance and the mics are really in lousy shape. In between technical difficulties, Donald Trump was asked about Kamala Harris and DEI a political minefield for politicians, but Trump shut his eyes and waltzed right in. Republicans on Capitol Hill have labeled Vice President Kamala Harris, who is the first black and Asian American woman to serve as vice president and be on a major party ticket as a DEI hire. Is that acceptable language to you? And will you tell those Republicans and those supporters to stop it? How do you, how do you define DEI? Go ahead. How do you define Diversity, it? equity, inclusion. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Is that what your definition? Give that me, is, that, that give, is Give me a definition the then. Would you give me a definition DI. of that? Give me a definition sir, of I'm that. Sir, I'm asking you a question, no, no, a very you have to direct define question. It. Define, the, define it for me, if you I would. just defined it, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say, no, I think it's maybe a little bit different. She was always of Indian heritage, and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically either black one. college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she is I think she somebody should look into that too when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. It's a direct question, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, as I, some Republicans I really have don't said? Know. I mean, I really don't know. Could be, could be. Would Jesse Waters have answered the question that way? Probably not. Is this going to help the Trump campaign? I don't know. No idea. At this point, we don't know how this plays, but people are going to be talking about it for months, and Johnny's going to be there for that. Trump touched a nerve with the media, that we know.
is probably some of the most disgusting rhetoric I've heard at the presidential level, mm -hmm. that Donald Trump believes that he is the arbiter of what it means to be black in the United States. This was offensive. This was ignorant. This was graceless. He came to use them as a backboard to score with the MAGA crowd to say, I'm one of y'all. I will go to their own conference and do everything but call them the N-word. Does the media talking about Kamala's race help or hurt Kamala's campaign? We'll see. Kamala's mother is Indian and her father's Jamaican, and she's referred to identity in different ways in her political career, which makes no difference at all to me, but maybe it does to African Americans. I have no idea. These are uncharted waters. Trump told Kamala, you ain't black. All Democrats want to do is talk about identity, and when Trump talks about identity, they go nuts. They say DEI is great, and when you say you're a DEI hire, they say you can't say that. This proves Trump's not afraid of Kamala Harris and is not going to avoid issues. He's going to confront them. He's not going to change even after dodging an assassin's bullet. The week after the attempt on his life, in the first 20 minutes of his RNC speech, when he held the country in the palm of his hand and appeared to have ascended into a higher realm of consciousness, we're seeing that's an impossible state to maintain. He's going to come back down to earth. He may have moments where he rises back into the political heavens and unites the country with calm wisdom, but those moments could be fleeting, which is why this country must take emotion out of their vote. This is a choice over leadership. You tune out the he said, she said, and use your natural gift of reason. Politics are, are, are the most disgusting, nasty, um, it, it's, 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 a, it's atrocious what is said in, in politics. And, and the things that are being said on, on one side are being said on the other side, too. And as voters, as voters, what we need to do is cut through all the BS, and you have to look at um, who do you think is best fit to run the country for the next four years. That is our job as voters. All of this stuff is a bunch of, of nasty BS, all of it. Who's best well, fit to run the country? You as a voter, that's what you need to decide. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.